Hey beautiful people, what's up? Welcome back to another 10 minute meal recipe video. What do you feed your husband? My husband, my spouse, or my family is not plant-based. What do I do? And I see this all the time in the comments. If you guys did not know, my husband is not plant-based, but we like to joke he's plant-based by proxy because I'm the one that does all the cooking. So typically he eats exactly what I eat, but oftentimes I do cater to things that he wants and it makes it also easier on me. We have learned and grown over the past year and a half of me being plant-based, what works for us, and I thought I would share some of his personal favorite recipes here today. These are four 10-minute meals that I can make if we both want something different for meals on a specific night or maybe if I'm doing a merry mini and he is eating regular food these are just really easy ideas plus the bonuses they take 10 minutes or less they're perfect for summer and I think these will be all ideas that your families might love if they aren't plant-based like my husband I try my very best to come up with new meal ideas and I like I said I just thought this would be really helpful for you guys if you're looking for different meals for summer quick easy 10 minutes or less or even to introduce your family to some plant-based meals if they're not on that plant-based bandwagon yet maybe these will be good things that they will look forward to okay i know everyone likes macaroni and cheese and this is a simple simple recipe three ingredients you're again going to need the cheese sauce that is at the end of this video also the recipe is in the description box so make sure you snag that before you make this recipe you're also going to need a pasta of your choice. I like white pasta. I say this in almost every video. I just can't do whole wheats and whole grains, so I stick to more of the starchy whites. Use whatever kind of pasta you want. I'm using large elbow macaroni because we're making macaroni. And then we're gonna throw in a hidden green. I'm just using a quick stem of broccoli, fresh broccoli. You can use frozen, you can use any vegetable you like. I really like peas with this meal as well. So if your kids don't like broccoli, try peas, but we're gonna make the quickest seven minute macaroni and cheese. Not only is this a quick, easy, less than 10 minute meal, it's also a one pot meal, as long as you have the cheese made, which I will tell you, I have been making my cheese sauce at least once, if not twice a week and keeping it on hand because I use it in so many different recipes. It is just one of those really easy things that you can put with everything. So I let my pasta cook for about four minutes and then when it has just a couple minutes left, I chop up my broccoli and add it in because it's kind of just steaming. If you want it to cook longer, you can. And then I do save about a quarter cup of my pasta water. It's actually already in the pot. I realized I did not film that. And then I add in about two cups of my cheese sauce, but you can add as much or as little as you'd like. Also, I think I've shared this before, but we also do a baked macaroni and cheese where I'll actually put this into like a glass casserole dish and they put it in the oven at like 400 degrees with some panko breadcrumbs really really delicious so that way it makes it kind of more crunchy and creamy super good I did add some onion powder and some more salt you can season this however you would like but I do find that the saltier the cheese sauce the more flavor it gives um, I do you know a bunch of different flavorings in it as well the recipes at the end but that's it this was ready in seven quick minutes I feel like the extra large macaroni noodles just look so good in this recipe it's nice and cheesy flavored you also have a lot of extra vegetables in here and a lot of extra starches because the cheese sauce is just potatoes and carrots a little bit of garlic and a bunch of seasonings if you are someone who's looking to go plant based I highly recommend having a cheese sauce in your arsenal okay pause the video right now if you know what we're making <laughs> I can almost guarantee all of you do reminder use any kind of tortilla or tostado that you want you can even make your own if you want to do oil free that is up to you this is a quick easy meal idea that takes like two minutes to make so here is some cheese sauce I will show you how to make this at the end of the video it takes me like 10 15 minutes to make super easy and I make a batch of it almost every week and have it on hand for quick easy meals if you don't want to do cheese sauce, you don't have to, but I feel like it adds a really nice element to the dish. Also, if you don't want to make your own cheese sauce, so many different companies have cheese sauces. Target has some, Sprouts has some, Whole Foods does. So if you don't want to make one, you can always buy one. Refried beans. I decided to do black beans with jalapeno peppers. These are fat free for anyone wondering if they have fat in them. Typically it's lard and they are not vegan. 
but I decided to do this instead of regular refried beans just to kind of switch it up. Again, same as the first recipe, just using a eight inch tortilla. If you're wondering, these are mission tortillas. Um, I like that they're vegan. Some lettuce and tomato that is already pre-chopped and I had decided to do something different with my tostados this time. And if you haven't guessed it, we are making a crunch wrap. So let's get to building it. It literally takes like less than a minute to make. You can also put it in the air fryer. I'm just throwing it on a pan on the stove because literally it's like 30 seconds each side. Currently, this is my husband's favorite meal. He's had it like three or four times in the last week or so. I like to put the cheese down first and then the beans and then the tostada, and then the lettuce, and then the tomato, and then I wrap it up. If you've made any kind of, you know, quesadilla, or that would actually be another really good option, if you, especially if you have kids, maybe they don't like the beans, but you can add any kind of salsa or taco sauce or any kind of seasoning to this. But I feel like the best thing about this is the texture. Like you have so many different textures going on, plus the lettuce and the tomato, because they are in a screaming hot skillet, like for, I don't know, like 20 to 30 seconds on one side. They still have like a cooling effect. You can also warm your cheese and your beans if you want to. I never do. I probably should. It would probably be so much better. But you just pinch the sides together. I think they call it a clamshell or something. I don't know. I tried to show you here really quickly, but I feel like everybody knows how to wrap it. It comes unwrapped like as soon as you <laughs> let go of it. But I put it wrap side down in a really hot pan. I just turned my heat on my pan about medium for about a minute, minute and a half. It gets really hot. And then I flip it and then I do it on the other side for about 30 seconds. It doesn't take long at all. You can also put it in your air fryer if you want to. That's another option. If you don't use the tortillas that I have, which are Mission tortillas and then whatever the brand of tostados was, you can also get oil free if you want to do oil free. And then I served it with a side of the cheese sauce, which is really good to dip it in. You can serve it like this or you can cut it in half. This one actually looks so pretty to me. It's delicious. I hope you enjoy it. Here are the ingredients you're going to need. You can also improvise for anything that you have at home or something you don't like, you can improvise for anything that you like better. So you're gonna need one tortilla, at least one tortilla, because there's gonna be a, a, a big tortilla. This is just an eight ounce one. You can use multiple, I guess, if you are super hungry, but I'm just gonna use one. You're going to need a couple of leaves of romaine lettuce, at least one pickle, if not more, about a quarter cup of pickle juice, a couple slices of a tomato, a couple slices of apple. It's really good with Granny Smith apple, but I didn't have any of those on hand, so I'm just using what I think is a Fuji. You're also gonna need some garbanzo beans, and I'm whipping up a little bit of a batch here, so I'm using an entire can of garbanzo beans, and this usually makes three of these wraps, so keep that in mind. So if you need to add more beans for the rest of your family or for meal prep, you're gonna need a couple more cans. Also, you're going to need a mustard of your choice. I decided to go sweet and hot because I thought that sounded really good with a little bit of acidity from the pickles and then the sweetness from the tomato and the apple. So I decided to go with sweet and hot mustard. This is all over at tons of different grocery stores. I get mine at Winco Foods. You can find it at Kroger, you can find it at Walmart. It just is a, a different name, um, but it's so good. It's just got a little bit of a kick to it. I'm also gonna add some seasonings, some turmeric, onion powder, and garlic salt. Use any kind of seasonings you'd like, but let's jump in to the recipe. I'm pretty sure I've shared this recipe so many times on my channel that you guys are probably knowing what's coming by looking at the ingredients, but in the summer, wraps, sandwiches, quick and easy things that you don't have to turn your stove, air fryer, oven, anything on, perfect. So I use my food processor constantly. If you notice, I did not drain or rinse these chickpeas, so this is a very thin chickenless chicken salad or chickpea salad or tuna-less salad. I've seen this like so many names, but I did not drain and rinse my beans, so this is more like a dip consistency. It's very runny. If you don't like it, this consistency, drain and rinse your beans because it'll give it more of a thicker paste or pastier kind of substance. But I wanted to make it kind of liquidy because I wanted to also use it as a dip. I get about three wraps out of one can, so keep that in mind if you want to use less or more, but that kind of gives you an idea of about how much it makes. So I did make this a little liquidy. If you put it in your refrigerator, it does firm up a little bit overnight, 
but I didn't wait overnight. <laughs> I made it right away. And then I chopped up some apples and tomato and lettuce and pickles. You can add anything you want to this. It's also really good with olives because it adds that salty element. So good. Anything like briny and sweet and salty together is just so good. And then you put it in a wrap and you eat it. You can also toast the wrap if you want to. I've had many of you tell me on Instagram that you toast the wrap, but this is also something you can pack with you for a lunch if you want to. Um, it takes like four or five minutes to throw it together and then that's it. But you could add all the components to like a container and then put the chickpea salad um, kind of in a side dish and then put your tortilla on the side to kind of keep everything separate and then you could build it at work if you want to. It's just so good. I love the different textures and the crunchiness and like it's not hot. It's nice and cool so it's nice and refreshing. It's delicious. Make sure you, this is one recipe that you absolutely try, especially if your family is looking for a replacement for chicken salad. Okay, last and final recipe here. We have the cheese sauce again. If you have someone in your life who is not on the plant-based bandwagon, try cheese sauce. It adds a lot of flavor, and most people, when they go completely vegan or just plant-based, cheese is like the hardest thing to give up because it's very addictive, so try some kind of cheese sauce, whether it's homemade or store-bought, just try it. It actually really does help. You're also going to need a can of beans. I'm using chili beans and tomato sauce because they have a lot of flavor, and I know my husband really, really likes these, plus it saves me a step of adding additional seasoning, so win-win, easy, and super inexpensive. You're also gonna need some type of potato, any kind that you want. You can use sweet potato, russet, Yukon, whatever. These are also pre-baked already, so they look a little bit sad, but they're gonna go into my air fryer, and when they're pre-baked, they just get nice and crispy. You can remove the skins if you want to, too, but I'm leaving them. You need some lettuce and tomato, plus I'm gonna actually share with you two options for this. So if you have a husband or children that just like can't get on the potato wagon, I think the battle can be very small if you include something like, so I know for a fact my husband loves seasoned potato wedges that come frozen. So oftentimes when I am making something for myself that I'm like, well, you know what? He would really enjoy something like this. I just go for it. So fries, air fryer fries that are frozen is a great option for your kids. I know a lot of you are oil free and these do have some oils in them, but again, sometimes you just have to pick your battles. To me, I would rather make this than like chicken nuggets or any type of meat product. This is a win for me if my husband doesn't wanna do regular potatoes. Plus, I know it has a lot of extra seasoning and it tastes like an appetizer you're gonna get at the store. We already have a lot of other healthy options here, so again, I'm just picking my battles, but this is an option that you can use and one that I use often. So just keep that in mind. I'm not making it with these today, but as you can see, they're open because I've made them with this before, but we're doing regular russets today. Like I said, you can use anything you want, but I just want to show some options because this doesn't take much longer than doing this. And you can usually do like two batches in your air fryer if you want to, and then you have two meals and you have one for yourself, one for your family, one for your kids or whatever. And it's actually like making the same thing. It's well worth it. For these chili cheese fries, I do like to warm up my chili beans a little bit, just for a minute or two in a small saucepan on my stove, and I actually just microwave the cheese sauce. You could do that with the beans too if you want to, but chop some lettuce, tomatoes, this would be really good with onions, or any kind of vegetable you like, really, but I just kinda went tried and true with, you know, chili cheese fries. You could add lentils to this if you wanted to. And then cold baked potatoes, I feel like are the absolute best in the air fryer. So if you don't wanna make them ahead of time, you don't have to, you could just put potatoes in the air fryer and then leave them in there a little bit longer. But when they're cold like this, it really is only like six or seven minutes. And that's perfect for me. They're just a little crunchy, they're really creamy. You add all the toppings to this. It literally is like an appetizer that you get at a restaurant, but you're eating it at home as a meal. So delicious. If you want to too, you could pulse up these beans and kind of make them more of a paste, add taco seasoning, add more seasoning, any any way that you'd like, but just layer it up. The more cheese sauce, the better. <laughs> like I said, if you want to do regular, you know, just frozen french fries for your family, I think that's completely fine. I mean, it's really about getting people on the bandwagon for eating plant-based, so whatever you have to do to kind of make that happen, to make things easy on you. I have a tier air fryer, so I can do three trays at once. If you have a basket, you might have to make a couple different, you know, options when it comes to fries, but this is just really, really easy. So here is the cheese sauce. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know I've shared this recipe so many times, especially in the last couple weeks, but I just used some russet potatoes because that's what I had on hand, and I do peel them for this recipe. Normally I don't peel them, but 
Yukon is my favorite for this recipe. I just didn't have any on hand. I used a couple carrots and some garlic. I put it all in a pot of boiling water. I put a lid on it and I let it cook for about eight minutes. It cooks really fast. Seasonings, I use turmeric, garlic salt, onion powder, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of paprika, and then about a half a cup of nutritional yeast. It kind of gives it that tangy, cheesy flavor. People ask all the time if they have to use nutritional yeast. Absolutely not. You can use any kind of seasonings that you like. And the other question I get a lot is, does it taste like cheese? No, because it's made out of potatoes and carrots, and I feel like that's really magical if it actually tastes like cheese, but it has a tanginess because of the nutritional yeast that I feel like gives it that kind of cheesy flavor, but it's a really good substitute, especially if you are someone who is looking to go plant-based and just really misses cheese. I feel like it's a really good substitute. So you put everything in a high-speed blender and pulse it up until it's nice and smooth. I did add some of the uh, cooking water to this. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want to. I've been making it a lot thicker as of recently. Sometimes I make it thinner so it's way more pourable, but honestly make it to the consistency that you like. Flavor it with it however you want to. Play with the recipe. Add different things. It's just really, really really delicious. I want to quickly say thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really liked it. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this style of video with the 10 minute meals, different recipes for summer, plus just some different meal ideas to give your family, kids, friends, anyone who might not be plant-based, who might want to try some plant-based meals that are simple and easy and not a lot of time commitment. I really enjoyed filming this recipe video. Like I said, it's some of my husband's favorites, so I thought they would be really good ones to share as well. Of of course I like them too but like I said if I want to whip up something different for the two of us or just have something fast and easy because it's very hot in the summertime these are some really good go-to meals have an awesome day and I'll see you very soon bye